Chris Crone here with Limitless Wealth TV and today we're talking about the pre-approval process. This is going to be the shortest, most compact course you've ever had on how to know whether you want to get pre-approved, use someone else's credit so you can make that deal happen. All right, man, you want to get out there and it's time for you to crush it in real estate. And pre-approval is one of the first things that you gotta do so that you can know what you're equipped with. You might be in a position right now to buy real estate based on your credit situation, or you might not. Either way, as a bonus, I'm gonna show you how you can get real estate no matter what. But first, let's talk about that pre-approval. Let's talk about how you make that happen. Really, it comes down to the fact that we have all these banks and all of these banks are basically saying, what programs do we have for you? And all these programs are a little different. They're these lending programs. And so first of all, you do need to know that not every bank is created equal. When I went and I was preparing to buy my first property, I was pushing the limit. I had barely two years of work history. I had just gone from part-time pay up to full-time pay. And I walked into a bank that I had been banking with for years. And by the time, days later, I was done with the pre-approval process, guess what they did? They denied me. And I'm like, crap. In my mind, I'm like, are all banks the same? I went to another popular bank in the area. I went through that whole process. And you know what? I got denied again. I only had a couple of weeks left to finish my loan before my, I, this house, it, it was my first house. This was gonna create all this wealth that's, that it has for me in my life. And I, was, I didn't even know that at the time. I just knew that I needed to get this deal done. And that's when I got smart. And instead of going to a bank, I went to a broker. Now a lending broker is different. This is someone that works with many banks. And I sat down with them. I said, I got a couple weeks left. I'm trying to buy this house. I know I'm just kind of trying to squeak through. This bank turned me down, that bank turned me down. And this is what they said. Not all banks are created equal and there are different programs for different people. Let's see your situation. Well, needless to say, by the time I needed to close on the property, I got a loan. It was my first loan. And it wasn't the bank that I banked at that made it happen. It wasn't the other bank on the corner that I saw. It was dealing with a, a broker. So this is what you're looking for. You're looking for a loan officer because a loan officer that has access to many banks is going to help you get pre-approved when maybe the bank you're most familiar with is not capable of giving you an approval. Now, listen, you can't take it personal. Banks are dealing with millions of people and at the end of the day, it's just ones and digits and they like some ones and digits better than others. There are some banks that'll work with low credit ratings and other banks that won't. There are some banks where, where they'll say, well, you make a lot of money, but it's stated income and it's not reported as a W-2, so we don't like you. And this other bank says, we'll do stated all day long. So understand this first and foremost, that people can get so discouraged in the lending process and you got to toughen yourself up and get some elephant skin on there and just not let that bother you so much. Okay. And the reason why is because there's all these banks and if you give up, you'll never know what you were really capable of and what you really could have done. Here's what banks are going to look at. Number one, debt to income ratio. They're going to look at uh, what are your ongoing monthly obligations that you owe people for? Like, well, you owe on this car rental and you owe on this and you owe on that student debt. And then they want to know how much leftover income do you have after you pay your bills? Oh, that, de well, that will produce a debt to income ratio. How much debt do you have versus how much you make? And that's something that they're going to look at. They're also going to look at what you have for a down payment on a property. If it's a home for you, I love taking advantage of the 3% and 5% down payment programs. You know, on a $200,000 house, 3% is six grand. But investor lending, you got to put 20% down. 3% versus 20%, right? So 3%, that's awesome. That's smoking hot. I can take, you know, if you buy a house with $40,000 of equity and you put $6,000 down, when that deal's done, you're going to walk away feeling like a hero because you're going to make a pile of money. They're also going to want to know, is this for you to live in or is this an investment? Because those are two very different banking systems. Uh, the lending rates and the things that you get when you're buying a home for you is more lenient with generally lower rates than buying an investment property. Because the bank will say, what's higher risk? Chris living in the house or Chris putting someone else in the house. If it's an investment property, it's higher risk. Your, your, your interest rate may be a full percentage higher, 1% higher, half a percent higher. All of those things are what the bank's looking at, including your hidden assets. 401ks, IRAs, any money that you have in equity and other properties, money that you have in savings. And banks gonna wanna know, if you put a down payment, you're gonna have a little leftover in the bank, you're gonna have three to six months worth of payments still. Those are all the considerations that are happening in the bank size. Now, before you go find a loan officer, I wanna share two very important things with you. Here's the first one. You need to have 
Um, your debt to income ratio, which means the money that is forcibly going out every month for obligations, generally can't be more than 50% of how much you make. If it is, you're probably not gonna get approved. The second thing is credit score. You gotta have a credit score generally 680 or 700 or 720. Some banks will work with you at a 620 credit score, but if you're in the 500s, then you need to use the alternative bonus that I'm gonna share with you a little later. So you gotta do some credit repair, you gotta get your credit maintained and up a little bit. And um, down payment. You gotta have enough for the down payment, whether it's 20% or 3%, as well as five, three, four, five, six months worth of payments in the bank. So let's say the mortgage is gonna be $800. The bank might wanna see that after your down payment, you still have three, four, five, six thousand dollars left over in the bank. They're like, whew, something happens, you lose your job, you got a couple months before you get your next job, and you can still make your payment, and we as the bank, we're not going down for it, okay? Now, if you're not in, so if you do fall into that situation, the second piece of advice I have for you is, how do you find a good loan officer? Okay, this is very important. Find a successful loan officer. Successful means they do lots of volume with lots of banks. Okay, this is really important. You can't go to the brother-in-law that's the loan officer here. They can help you, but if you wanna be helped the most, you gotta to go to the most successful loan officers out there that every month do sign on many loans. You're looking for one that is at least doing at least five or eight loans a month. And that means that they have experience. If it's investment lending that you need, not your primary residence, then you need to find a loan officer that specializes in, in investment lending. So how many deals are they closing a month? And number two, how many different banks do they work? Well, we really have just one or two. Oh, we've got 10 or 12. Okay, the one that has the most volume and has the most banks is going to be able to open up the most doors for you. Now, that's what you do to get pre-approved. Now, where do you find loan officers? That's easy. It's this really cool new technology called Google, which is super, super cool. You just Google and start looking around and ask some people, shoot, post it on Facebook. Anyone here know, you know, on your social media, anyone know a good loan officer? And then you can call and interview them. How many banks do you work with? How many deals are you doing a month? They're gonna feel that that's a little bit invasive, but it's all fair for you to understand that information so that you can pick the right person to work with. So friends, that's how you get pre-approved on this. The last bonus piece I wanna give you is, what do you do if your credit is maxed out or if you have bad credit? Listen, do not associate your self-worth or credit worthiness with just your credit score alone. Exceptions happen, bankruptcies happen, divorce happens, life happens, job loss happens. And sometimes people will allow one or two of those moments to define their credit worthiness for the rest of their life. I'll tell you right now, I, I have good credit, but I have good credit starting from a place where I didn't have credit at all and I needed to build it. And there are times when my credit score dropped because I had a lot of real estate and then I brought it back up. And I'll tell you today, I'm using my personal credit for maybe four or five properties and that's it. Which means that how, how do I own all these other properties if I'm not using my credit? Well, friends, I'll tell you right now, it is my preference not to use my credit when dealing in the game of real estate. I deal in partners, both for credit and for money. Someone brings credit to the table, they get cut in on, a, on maybe 10%, 15% of the deal. If someone comes to the table and they bring money, they usually get cut on on 50% of the deal. And that is the best news that I have for you is if you're determined to do real estate, there's only two things that'll stop you. You don't got the credit, you don't got the money. If you got those two things, go out there and crush it and blow it up. But if those are getting in your way, I want you to click the link here, come to my website, and I want you to investigate Partner Profits. I want you to investigate a program where I show you how you can partner with anyone, how to find the people with the money, how to find the people with the credit, and how you become the matchmaker, the deal maker, in putting it all together. If you wanna learn more about that, check out the website, because I'm gonna tell you right now, never allow a lack of credit or an overuse of credit to keep you from doing the deal that you're supposed to be doing right now. If you're looking for a loan officer that can rock it out for you, take care of you, that is doing lots of real estate and has been doing lots of loans in both the investment world, that is uber qualified, I want you to click the link. Get in touch with me and my team and we'll share with you exactly how we can help you rock out your next real estate deal.